all my life, man. 1972. Uh, he was cool, loving, loved his family, you know. Same, you know, coming up, taking care of customers out, making us tough, chastising us, kicking our ass. But in other words, shit, he was showing us tough love, but he was cool. Shit, he was, he was, he was gangster, man. He fought for his family. The motherfucking uh, niggas whoop on his cousins, sisters. He go whoop them and kept a lot of guns. Man, I tell you like this, man, when he told us, he said, when you making money like that, man, you can't take no shit from no motherfucking body. So you had to have your motherfucking attitude, trust nobody. The money changed him, man, but you know, in the business he was in, man, he couldn't trust nobody. In, in the, in the uh, 80s, man, it was a lot of motherfucking money being made, and there was a lot of snakes out here. So he had to get gangster. Don't fuck with his money. Man, man, I first started hustling off goddamn selling dollar joints. Strictly dollar joints. And he made a lot of money off dollar joints. He used to steal two, three thousand dollar joints a day. So I add that up. Well, under the gangster act name, his, his name been ringing under the gangster act. Before the money, before the joints, before all that shit. And he was just always straight gangster. Always. Never was no phony motherfucker. He never sugarcoated shit. And he kept it 100. Well, that was his nephew. And the, the relationship, I really couldn't tell you about that. Because I wasn't too much in the picture then. I was around, but I wasn't in the picture with, with him and Michael in a relationship. So I can't tell you too much about that one. <laughs> shit. Four Heist was his town, man. This was his whole motherfucking town. He had a whole lot. Police in his pockets. The stoves in his pocket. Shit. He had the whole hood in his in his He had a lot of power. He was he was Ford Heights. We used to call that nigga Mr. Ford Heights. Well, on that shit with the white boy trying to kill him, I don't know too much about that. Shit, I was about shit, 14, 15 at the time myself. Maybe 16, so they kept that shit under the hat with, with, with the workers. We weren't doing nothing but just getting that chop, man. So, but, uh, you know, I heard, goddammit, uh, shit, he had something to do with it, and that's about it. But other than that, I, I couldn't tell you about that one. Uh, in the beginning, they, 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 they relationship was marvelous. They was buddies. You know what I'm saying? They was ace, cool, queen of thorns. Cause you know, shit, he had Jack in his pocket. So you gotta be buddies with a nigga if you got in your pocket. State police did that cause they kept raiding the motherfucker and they could never, they could never motherfucker uh, catch no dope or nobody in the house. So goddamn it, they say, fuck it, we gonna burn this motherfucker down. And they burnt it down. Berkeley Blue House? The Blue House on Berkeley, yeah. They burnt it down, they could never catch nothing in the motherfucker. They could never catch nobody in the motherfucker. So they burnt the motherfucker up. Well, uh, man, uh, shit, the one who attempted to sell uh, Hank, cock-eyed Hank, man, he say Floyd sent him to kill Jack, and uh, shit, he said he ain't try to kill Jack. So, and I guess that's when the beef started. Greed, more money. When his wife came to mail, he wanted more money. And Floyd wasn't having that shit. So I ain't paying you another dime. I'm motherfucker with you. I'll kill you or you gonna kill me. And that's what brought Jack and Floyd relationship to an end? Yes, sir. Man, the Bro Brooks boys and Floyd, shit, their relationship was cool in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Then, shit, you know, the more money Floyd got to make it, shit. And then the Brooks boys had the Brooks, Floyd had Berkeley, shit. And then they wasn't complying, so goddamn it, it wasn't where I was. Floyd was going over there, pumping them out. And shit, that's how it went down. Floyd was pumping them out, and shit, and they caught him slipping. Man, well, I don't recall that, man, but I know about 6.30 in the morning, somebody had called my mama house and uh, 
told her, told me that Floyd dead to go wake my mama up. And I went and woke her up. She jumped up, hollering, hugging me. She said she was having a dream. Somebody killed me. And I said, no, nah, mama, it ain't me. It's Floyd got killed. And she, and that's all I remember. What I like about him, man, he was a cool motherfucker. He was a good motherfucker. He was our motherfucking bread, you know what I'm saying? What I dis what I like about him, man, he was disrespectful to us sometimes. Mean motherfucker, but he used to say he was mean because he wanted us on our square at all times, and we couldn't understand that. I didn't like when he used to take our motherfucking liquor when we was on the motherfucking spot, but you know. Oscar get a motherfucker liquor back to us, but you know what I'm saying? Floyd told us we couldn't take 9.99. We he sent a motherfucker to the spot with 9.99. We get a motherfucker a bag for 9.99, but we put the penny on there, and he'll come. You know that was just all a part of business. That's the part I didn't like about him, cause he wasn't letting the motherfucker go with a slug. Man, I'd rather for y'all to remember Floyd as a loving man. He loved his family. He loved his kids. He loved his wife. And he's just a motherfucker. Remember him as Mr. East Heights. Mr. Ford Heights. That's what I want y'all to remember him as Mr. Ford Heights. Because when he got damn it, uh, when he made these niggas, God damn it, whatever, it, whatever he's selling that day, that's what the whole East Heights had to say. If he sell 215, the whole East Heights had to say too. If he sell 20s, the whole East Heights had to sell 20s. If he sell dimes, the whole East Heights had to sell dimes. And remember him just a real, real gangsta ass nigga. Alright, man, you said who all I believe had in the hands of uh, OG Death. I'm telling you like this, man. I really don't know, but I know he was walking down this street right here. Hell, Murphy. And his motherfucking missile. And then we had caught him walking up by this building. He said he's just walking to see in his motherfucking town, right? And then he, he said, shit, y'all go on about y'all business. I don't want nobody to walk with me. So we were like, cool. So shit, so he was telling all the little fellas how he feel about him. You know, he ain't, he ain't disrespect his family, but he disrespected everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Who, goddamn it, he, he felt how he felt. That's what he had told these niggas. But you know what I'm saying? So then he was hollering, woo, 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 woo. Then shit, the nigga walked off like, man, don't trust no bitch. A bitch will get you killed. And the next day he was dead. Boss. Man, nigga, we was so deep with this shit, so deep with this motherfucker, man. We was the FBI's. Floor Boys Incorporated, and we were serious about that shit, cause he took care of us, we ate, slept good, looked good, and me and me and my brother Lee, we had goddamn lease, fit it down out with a pair of gym shoes, let alone, that nigga took, used to take us to the water tower downtown, ride boot out, Way motherfucker, mink, mink sweaters and all that cool shit. But you see a nigga still on his shit. I like this shit. But uh, we was FBI's and we FBI's till we die. Love you, nigga. R.I.P.